Greetings everyone, I'm Karen Jane Casey and this is Turn to God with Karen. You might be wondering, what is this podcast about and who is it for? Well, it's on this podcast that we talk about challenges we face, trials, circumstances that are beyond our control, and the choices that we make, always knowing that we can turn to God about anything. This message is for each and every one of us, regardless of how good our life seems right now or how deep and dark our troubles may be. It's on this podcast that we ask, how can I overcome this? How can my broken heart be healed? Am I alone in it? And is there reason for hope for a good future for me? My favorite scripture in this podcast is Psalm 34, 18. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. I want to assure you that during this 15-minute episode, there will not be any lecturing down at you. I will not be yelling and preaching at you. But I'm sharing what I've learned along my journey. And I'm not finished. My journey is still going on. We learn together. And I encourage you to share what you've learned. Your testimony is important and someone needs to hear it. Dear Heavenly Father, I am so thankful that we can talk about you without fear of persecution. Lord God, help us. Help us to learn your words, your wisdom, your mercy, and healing over us all. In Jesus' name, amen. Today's episode title is, The Enemy is a Liar. The Enemy is a Liar. Well, who is our enemy? Do you have adversaries, enemies, people who are seeking to harm you with their lies, with their efforts, their manipulations? So isn't this message appropriate for this time frame, for such a time as this? We hear the news and the social media filled with false information or half-truths. We don't know what to believe, do we? Everything is appearing real, but much of it is lacking in common sense. About the pandemic, about the economic status, about accusations on politicians, crucial events, and crimes. We don't know what to believe. We don't know how extensive all of these things might really be. Hmm. The one thing that does ring true, though, is that we are being bombarded with so many lies that we just don't know what's really going on. But today, I want to look at the lies that we might be ha- might have been told individually, in a personal way, and from an early age. Those lies were carried to us when we were a child, and it went on through our adulthood. Many of us still believe the lies that we were told, and we're not even consciously aware of it, but it, it guides us in our operation day to day. Am I talking about child abuse situations? Yes, but not just in that air arena. Well-meaning parents or other authority figures may have led us astray without meaning to harm us, giving us their ideas, their views, their criticisms, their prejudices, and their skewed idea of morality. We have those circling around in our minds, and if we're not careful, we will take on what they gave us. But there is one who who know exactly what he was doing to us, fully with the intent to harm us, and that was ultimately the enemy, the devil. He is very intentional from the very beginning. If you believe in God, our creator, with all that his goodness is, then you must also believe that there is an evil enemy. We can see the battle going on all around us. The enemy works constantly to bring us down, tempting each of us to do evil to each other and to ourselves even. And the devil is referred to in the word of God as the father of all lies. Let's look at John 10, 10. A thief has only one thing in mind. He wants to steal, to kill, slaughter, and destroy. 
But Jesus has come to give every one of us everything in abundance, more than we expect, life to its fullness until it's overflowing. Who is the thief in that scripture? It's our enemy, the devil. But when people carry out what the enemy attempts them to do that will cause them harm or us harm, then they are also seeking to steal, to kill, and to destroy us, aren't they? So to us, the thief, the enemy, our adversary, might be anyone who decides to cause harm. Let's go back to that passage because it has something good for us in it as well. Jesus says, a thief has only one thing in mind. He wants to steal, to slaughter, and destroy. Well, that part we can grasp pretty quickly. But I have come, meaning Jesus has come, to give you everything in abundance, more than you expect, life in its fullness until you overflow. Well, that's wonderful, isn't it? And in that, we see the conflict. The Lord is fighting for us while the enemy is fighting to destroy us. So this spiritual battle is happening. Which do we tend to believe? The good things or the bad things? To make sure we will believe the lies of the enemy, he begins working on us from a very early age. And he gives us example after example that his lies may be truthful. Usually, this happens while we're still children. Do you remember King David? He is the one who stood against the giant Goliath. And he killed that giant with just a slingshot and stones. He later became King David and he was known as to being a man after God's own heart. So this is what King David said in Psalm 139, verse 16. Lord, you saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before me before a single day had passed. So what does that tell each of us? It tells us that we were not created by accident. There was no mistake about it. And nothing that happened in our lives was insignificant. In other words, everything that has happened in our lives is significant. But you know, whenever the enemy seeks to harm us, the Lord can make it for good. We need to always know that we can turn to God to rescue us in any situation. I'm going to share a part of my testimony of when the enemy first told me lies. And it wasn't until I was a mature adult, well, I don't know about how mature I was, um, that God was able to dispel those lies and prove them to be lies. So please hear me out for a few minutes. I realize that my story may be different than yours child abuse. My mother was the abuser, physically and emotionally. It was random and it was often. When she wasn't beating me, she was acting as if she cared about me. That was really disturbing, hard to understand. My father always remained indifferent. He knew about the beating, but he did nothing. He betrayed me by not coming to my rescue over and over again. He did not act as if he cared what happened to me. That home was a volatile and violent place to live in. My life is a miracle. There are many times that I was not, I should not have survived. I should not have been survived with the use of all my limbs. What were the lies of the enemy that were being told to me in that kind of an environment? That I was not loved or not lovable. I was not worthy. I was stupid and I was not enough. But at the same time, in that same situation, I was able to go to vacation Bible school where I learned about Jesus and I learned that he loves me. And I heard the good news of Jesus. And at that same time, I lived through many horrible incidents. How did I survive? 
Let's look at Psalm 27:10, which I feel is the key to my survival. My father and mother abandoned me. I'm like an orphan, but you took me up and made me yours. And that's the simple and honest reason that I did survive that horrible lifestyle. When my parents essentially had forsaken me or abandoned me because of the beatings, the bad treatments, the ignoring my need for help, causing both emotional and physical pain, when my parents abandoned me, the Lord, the King of the universe, had mercy on me and adopted me. The miracle after miracle, he caused me to survive. He scooped me up and rescued me. All the while, the enemy continued to tell me that I was not lovable, I was not worthy, I was stupid and not enough. So as an adult, what did I believe? Essentially, I believed both. I believed the Lord had mercy on me, although I was not anything worth it, not worth the rescue. As an adult, I made the decision to turn to the Lord. I had been saved by the blood of Jesus. I was a believer, yet I didn't realize that because of Jesus, I was a loved child of God, and I was worthy. With that mindset, not knowing how worthy I was to the Lord, I allowed mean-spirited people to continue mistreatments. So guess what? The enemy knew that I still believed the lies that he told me. What kind of people then did I repeatedly expose myself to? Who did I have relationships with? I met people who did not care, were broken, and betrayed me. I experienced a life-threatening domestic violence situation while I was in my 40s. And you can read about that getting into, experiencing, and overcoming challenges related to domestic violence in my book, My Dear Rosa Jean. It was during my recovery that I wrote that book, sharing my testimony the best I could at the time in a fictional novel. Eventually, I brought myself into a relationship with a dangerous and evil man who abused me and tried to take my life. When I could no longer bear the pain of it, the despair and the torture, I humbly cried out to the Lord for forgiveness, rescue, and salvation. And he did forgive me, and he gave me a way to escape that situation. Again, what was it that I had believed about myself? Essentially, I had believed the Lord did have mercy on me, although I was not anything worthy. But eventually I did realize Jesus is worthy. Because I accepted Jesus, through his grace, I am worthy. My recovery was long. I learned and I am still learning to cast my cares on the Lord and to forgive others and to let it go. I learned that when a person doesn't care about me, who a person is mean-spirited, it's not about me. It's about the condition of their heart. Oftentimes, it's likely that they have rejected Jesus. We can forgive and pray for them. My rededication to Jesus was seven years ago when I took that first step of faith. Tremendous for me because I, I had trust issues towards people in general. I trusted the Lord, but people not so much. After several years of being in a relationship with the church and with my significant other, Yet, unwilling to commit to either, the Lord pressed me. He pressed me hard. And I joined the church, and I married my husband. Immediately, doors opened, and I finally could see my pathway towards growth and maturity. I knew what my purpose in life was, and I'm still traveling that journey. God inspired me to, as an author, as a podcaster, as a domestic violence advocate, and especially as an ambassador for Jesus Christ. Always I'm filled with gratitude for, God, for what God has brought me through, and that motivates me to serve Him by helping others. For such a time as this, with a pandemic, social distancing, violence, injustice, death, and chaos all around us, we must know we are in a spiritual battle right now. 
We need the Lord. At the beginning of this year, I felt inspired by God to write my next book. A new song rises up, sharing struggles toward salvation and the corresponding study guide. In a new song rises up, I share little bits of my testimony, what I've learned along my journey and applicable scriptures. And it is a message of hope, a message of healing, all for the purpose to influence and encourage readers to turn to God, to experience healing and to see how precious they are and to seek the Lord and accept Jesus. You can find my books at my website, KarenJaneCasey.com. That's C-A-R-I-N-J-A-Y-N-E-C-A-S-E-Y. Or you can Google a new song rises up.com. My simple testimony is this. I was once heartbroken, hopeless, an abuse victim who saw myself as not worthy, not enough. But then when I turned to God, I transformed through God's grace in Jesus. Because of the blood of Jesus, I know who I am. I am a loved child of God, his work of art, a new creature in Christ, a daughter of the Most High King. Throughout every moment of my life from the very beginning to now, God has used the enemy, what the enemy meant for harm and made it for good. For my good and that can be true for each and every one of us but maybe that's not your mindset today maybe you don't feel that you deserve to re receive any better treatment than you're getting maybe you have sin in your life and it's holding you back maybe, maybe you're filled with anger and resentment and bitterness because of the injustices that have happened to you but God already knows about all of this you can, you can certainly turn to him today. When we turn to God in repentance and believing in Jesus Christ, we change our mind, our thinking. We may start in a sinful life, but when we accept Jesus, we become new creatures in Christ and we are forever changed. We have a good future. What is your standing with the Lord right now? Regardless of what your troubles may be, he is well able to redeem you. I pray that you will choose to turn to God without delay. How much does the Lord love you? Look at John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And then Jesus himself said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Let's look at 1 John 5, verses 11 and 12. And this is what God has testified. He has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever has his Son has life, but whoever does not have God's Son does not have life. We each have that choice that we can make. We have free will, and we can make that personal decision. Regardless of where you stand today in your relationship with the Lord, I encourage you to please pray with me now out loud what is often referred to as the sinner's prayer. Dear Lord, I know that Jesus is the only begotten Son of God, and I know that Jesus suffered on the cross for me, for my sins, and defeated death arose in the third day. But I'm a sinner. I ask you to forgive me. I repent of my sins. I walk away from my sinful life. Please help me in that because I will be tempted. I need you, Jesus, and I am hopeless without you. I ask you, Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior, and I will serve you all of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. I encourage you to study the Word of God and pray. Learn the promises that the Lord offers you. Always pray and obey with gratitude as you grow in faith. And you can find inner peace and joy 
regardless of the circumstances that are around you. For such a time as this, I encourage you to read the book of Psalms in the Old Testament and see how King David prayed when he faced tremendous life-threatening circumstances. This is how I pray, I often pray through my own challenges. And this has been going on throughout the pandemic. I don't know how long I will pray this particular prayer, but I invite you to pray it with me. Dear Heavenly Father, you are the King of the universe. You are the creator of all living things. And we know that you love us, your children, profoundly. Lord, nothing happens that you're not aware of it. Nothing happens that you don't have control in it. So we ask you now, Lord, open our eyes. Show us our wrongdoing. Give us each the gift of conviction. Show us our wickedness so we can repent and have mercy on us, Lord. Lord, we ask that you cause a great revival, not just in this country, but throughout the entire world. Bring change to every person. Dear Father, we see that there is evil all around us. And we ask you now to cause the enemy's fiery darts, the enemy's flaming arrows, all of the attacks of the enemy to fall upon themselves and not upon your children, believers in Jesus. Cause our enemies to be completely exposed so that they are as nothing. Heal and protect your children, Lord. Rescue us. Nothing is too great for you to handle in your perfect way and your perfect timing. We believe and we know that with God, all things are possible. We praise you for all that you've done in our lives. We are thankful for the, all the challenges you have brought us through. You are our strength and our refuge, our rescue in times of trouble. Please forgive us of our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us, who are offended us. Lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil, Lord. Thank you for your love, your compassion, and your mercy. We praise you. We rejoice in you always for your grace through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to thank you for joining me in this episode of Turn to God with Karen. This is Karen Jane Casey author, speaker, domestic violence advocate, and ambassador for Christ. Stay tuned for Turn to God with Karen every Monday morning at 6.30 Eastern Standard Time. You can simply Google the podcast by name and find the episodes. This podcast is on stormtalk365radio.com. We're available on iTunes, Twitter, and Alexa on Amazon, hosted by iHeartRadio and Spotify. The platform is Spreaker.com. I invite you to give me your comments, your suggestions, any feedback is always appreciated. You can go to my website, KarenJaneCasey.com. That's C-A-R-I-N-J-A-Y-N-E-C-A-S-E-Y. When you go to my website, you'll see information about the books I've written. My book, new book that I mentioned, A New Song Rises Up, My Dear Rosa Jean, Mystery at Candace Bay, and Granny Babysits the Mischievous Five. My books are available on Amazon.com and Kindle. You can find all of my videos at Karen Jane Casey on YouTube. And if you go there, I hope that you will subscribe to my YouTube channel. Well, thank you and God bless.